Good day Grade 12. Welcome to this third lesson in Week 3 on Momentum and Impulse. In this lesson we're going to be looking at something slightly different but still to do with collisions. We've spoken about collisions and about the conservation of momentum and in this lesson we're going to learn about elastic and inelastic collisions which has to do with the conservation of kinetic energy. An inelastic collision is a collision in which kinetic energy is not conserved. So the total kinetic energy before the collision is not equal to the total kinetic energy after the collision. An elastic collision is a collision in which kinetic energy is conserved. So the total kinetic energy before the collision is equal to the total kinetic energy after the collision. Kinetic energy is the energy that an object has as a result of its motion or movement. To calculate kinetic energy, we use the equation kinetic energy is equal to half times mass times velocity squared, where K is equal to kinetic energy measured in joule. M is equal to mass measured in kilograms and V is velocity measured in meters per second. Kinetic energy is scalar, so it only has magnitude, not direction. When studying collisions and explosions, we need to consider the energy of the system as a whole before and after the event. In other words, we cannot just consider the gun or the projectile as two separate objects. We must consider them together. Let's calculate the kinetic energy of the gun and projectile before the explosion. The mass of the gun is 2,500 kilograms. The mass of the projectile is 34,5 kilograms. The initial velocity of the projectile and gun is zero meters per second as they are both stationary. The total kinetic energy of the system before the explosion is equal to the initial kinetic energy of the gun plus the initial kinetic energy of the projectile. This is equal to half times the mass of the gun times the gun's initial velocity squared plus half times the mass of the projectile times the projectile's initial velocity squared. Now we substitute in the values we know. Half times 2,500 times 0 squared plus half times 34,5 times 0 squared. This gives us an answer of 0. This value makes sense as the gun and the projectile aren't moving so they can't have any energy that is defined by motion. But what about after the explosion has taken place? Will the system have kinetic energy then? After the collision caused by the explosion, the masses of the gun and the projectile haven't changed. The projectile is moving at 1,575 meters per second and the gun is moving at 21,74 meters per second. So the total kinetic energy after the explosion is equal to the final kinetic energy of the gun plus the final kinetic energy of the projectile, which is equal to a half times the mass of the gun times the final velocity of the gun squared plus a half times the mass of the projectile times the final velocity of the projectile squared. When we substitute in what we know from our list, we have a half times 2,500 times 21,74 squared plus a half times 34,5 times 1,575 squared. This gives us 5,91 times 10 to the 5 plus 4,28 times 10 to the 7. The total kinetic energy after the explosion is 4,34 times 10 to the 7 joule. The initial kinetic energy of this system was zero, so we can see very clearly that the kinetic energy before the explosion is not equal to the kinetic energy after the collision. The explosion is described as being inelastic. The kinetic energy of the system has not been conserved. Tank gun ammunition going through metal boxes is not an everyday occurrence, is it? But every day on our roads, there are numerous inelastic collisions. 
For instance, when two cars collide, the momentum of the system will always be conserved, but the kinetic energy will not be conserved. Modern cars are designed to crumple on impact, so they deform. This is deformation energy which comes from the original kinetic energy of the cars. Also, car accidents usually result in a lot of noise, so kinetic energy has been transformed into sound energy. Now, while some collisions are inelastic, others are elastic. Can you work out what this means? You see, in an elastic collision, kinetic energy is conserved. But this can only happen if there is no friction or any other external force present. Elastic collisions don't transform energy to sound or heat. So actually, there are very few elastic collisions in everyday situations.